Dear learners, welcome back to the wonderful world of English language. Today, we are going to do part 2 of chapter 4, A Question of Trust from class 10th supplementary reader, Footprints Without Feet. Let's continue. As we all know, supplementary is for fun, but we need to comprehend. So, objectives of today's lesson. Now that we have gone through the lesson, I hope you will be able to read the short story, A Question of Trust with Understanding, Identify the Events with the Main Ideas and Sequence of Events. Second, you would be able to appreciate the text, interpret the events and the theme of the story and connect it with your personal life and daily knowledge. Let us continue. I hope you all have watched the part 1 of the series and read the chapter. If not, please go back and watch the part 1 of the series. However, I will repeat the summary for your help. The chapter is about Horace Danby, a respectable but not so respectable successful locksmith suffering from hay fever. He loves to read rare and expensive books. He robs a safe every year for getting money for it. This year he plans to rob Shotover Granji. There he encounters a lady in red who poses as the owner and fools Horace in opening the safe for her. Horace is arrested for the robbery. I hope you all can recall the chapter now. Keep your books, pens and notebooks ready. We'll do small exercises. I believe you have understood and can recall the chapter well. You have your pens and notebooks ready. Now I am giving you a small close passage. Please complete the passage with the help of the words given in the text box. You can see the passage on your screen. Horace Danby is a 50 year old successful. Yes, what did he do? Look at the words. Locksmith. Good. Everyone believes he is a good and respectable man. But it is not true. He was sent to jail once about how many years ago? 15 years ago where he developed a love for reading rare and expensive books. He commits thefts, thefts once a year to fund it. Fund it to get the money for the books. Good. This year he goes to Shortover Grange for robbery. He meets a woman who pretends to be the owner of the house. Very good. Good going. Let's continue. He opens the safe for her to avoid going to prison. Yes, he did not want to go to the prison. Three days later, he is arrested for the robbery and comes to know that she was also a, what was she? She was also a thief. Good. Have you completed the passage? I hope you have. Great going. Let's continue. Now, I am giving you a small audio clip from the lesson. If you have read the lesson, you can recall it. Now listen to the audio and then we can do a small activity. Please listen carefully. I might ask some questions. It was a quiet, kindly voice, but one with firmness in it. A woman was standing in the doorway and Sherry was rubbing against her. She was young, quite pretty and was dressed in red. She walked to the fireplace and straightened the ornaments there. Down Sherry, she said. Anyone would think I had been away for a month. She smiled at Horace and went on. However, I came back just in time. Though I didn't expect to meet a burglar. Horace had some hope because she seemed to be amused at meeting him. It was a quite kindly voice, but one with firmness in it. A woman was standing in the doorway and Sherry was rubbing against her. She was young, 
quite pretty and dressed in red. She walked to the fireplace and straightened the ornaments there. Down, Sherry, she said. Anyone would think I had been away for more than a month. She smiled at Horace and went on. However, I came back just in time, though I did not expect to meet a burglar. Horace had some hope because she seemed to be amused at meeting him. I hope you have heard the audio carefully. On the basis of audio you have heard and what you have read in the chapter, let us try to answer the following questions. First, was the lady afraid to say Horace there? Yes, you are correct. She wasn't afraid. She looked amused. Question number two. Can you identify one thing that made Horace trust the lady as the owner of the house? Think, think, think. Yes, there are few things that help us to know that why Horace trusted the lady. I am giving you some alternatives. You can choose any one. First, Sherry was rubbing against her. Second, she straightened the ornaments there. Third, she picks up the cigarette and lights it. Good, you can choose any one. All three are correct. Let us continue and develop the character of the lady in red. Look at the graphic organizer on your screen and try to fill in the blanks. You have to write everything about the character. Please remember, as we have discussed in the last series, a character has two things, physical traits and behavior traits. Can you point some of them? Let me help you out. The lady had quite kind but firm voice. She was young, quite pretty. She seemed to be amused at meeting Horace. She was dressed in red. She was smart, intelligent. She had presence of mind to pretend as the owner of the house. She was able to fool Horace into robbing for her. Yes, she had the money and Horace had the jail term. Good. Let us find out the common characteristics between Horace and the lady in red. We all know that both were thieves. So, there must be something common among them. Can you write them down? I will give you a minute to think and write. I am showing some of the pointers for your help. See if you were correct. Please mark yourself. Yes, both were thieves. They both were well prepared for the robbery. They both knew there was no one at home. They were both good planners. Well dressed. Nobody could guess they were thieves. Both were well dressed. They both had a common intention of robbing. They both looked suave. Suave means they looked stylish. They looked from a good family. Nobody could identify that they were robbers from the way they were dressed. They did not look like thieves. Were you able to write something correct? If yes, please raise your hands and pat yourself. Great work. Excellent work, I must say. Now, every chapter has little things on which we you need to pay attention to. I want to see were you paying attention while reading the chapter. If yes, please mark true and false. Question number one. Horace Danby was a respectable citizen. Is it true or false? Think. False. Why? Because he used to steal, so he was not respectable. Horace robbed a safe every year for living a luxurious lifestyle. See, this line has two parts. One is true and one is false. So what will we write? False. Because even if one information is incorrect, it is false. The servant at Shortover Grange had gone to the cinema that afternoon. True. The safe was in a safe place. What do you think? Is it true or false? False. Why? Because everybody knew where the safe was. It was behind a painting. Next, Sherry was the servant at Shortover Grange. 
false right sherry was a dog question number 6 horace took off his gloves to rob the safe you might think it is true but let me remind you horace took off his gloves to light the cigarette for the lady not to rob the safe he robbed the safe because he was careless so the answer is false next question the lady in red was the wife of the owner of the house perfect false everybody must have got it correct next horace danby likes to collect rare and expensive paintings right it is false he like to collect books in the end he reached from where he had begun the journey as a collector of rare books can you tell me yes again this is a tricky one half part of the sentence is correct and half part of the sentence is wrong in the end he reached from where he began the journey but in the prison yes he was back in the prison so answer is false next question he was a firm believer of honor among thieves false it might be true if we talk about it in the beginning of the chapter but by the end of the chapter he did not believe in it so answer is false now every story has something to offer even this story has now let us pause and think first do you think horace was unfairly punished or he deserved what he got do you feel sorry for him after all he was punished but he hadn't robbed the safe for himself he hadn't got the money do you feel sorry for him you may have your own answer you can write it down next question do intentions justify actions would you like horace than be do something wrong if you thought your ends justified the means do you think that there are situations in which it is excusable to act less than honestly you can have your own thoughts please remember you can mention the previous chapter a midnight visitor also in this context both the chapter have something in common i hope you have enjoyed reading the chapter and going through it with us let me suggest you some more chapters or readings or stories which you might enjoy if you go through them first the unexpected by ella hkin second the confession by anton chekhov third a case of defense by graham green all of them are fun stories you would enjoy reading them please go and enjoy so let me sign off today with part 2 of the lesson please continue reading the lesson and learn english thank you